Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I hope you're having a great day in Jesus. Thank you so much for being with us today. We're going to look at the question, is oneness, or the oneness of God as it's called, just a designation to let people know that, well, we'll explain it. <laughs> in patropassionism, is oneness and patropassionism the same thing? So again, thanks for being here. And generally, Probably, this is just a guesstimate, but the majority of scholars throughout history have said that oneness and patropassionism are the same thing. Now, what does patropassionism, well, think about patriarch, patra means father, and then passion means, you know, suffer, passions. And so, it's the father suffered. And so this was really a designation that Tertullian, who coined so many terms, like una substantia and tres personae, and I think even uh, Trinitas, I know Theophilus of Antioch could use that about 180 AD as well, in referring to God. So he's in this battle with a guy by the name of Praxius. Tertullian, he's a pretty sharp North African lawyer. And so he's saying Praxius, um, believes that the Father was in Christ. And I remember reading that years ago, maybe 35 years ago, and it really became crystal clear to me what the lines of theology are between oneness and what's called Trinitarianism, even though there's very little unanimity in some ways once you start digging down in what Trinitarianism is. I think it was James White who said that 75% of Trinitarians on church pews are functionally modalist or oneness. Something like that. It was a video clip going around a few years ago where he makes this statement. So, and so there's like, you know, 13 models of the Trinity in one place, nine models of the Trinity in another place. And so <laughs> people try to bring it together with the uh, 381 uh, Nicene Constantinople and Creed, and then the uh, 6th century AD Athanasian Creed that Athanasius didn't write. And so I'm like, that's kind of weird, you know, saying it's Athanasius. So what is oneness? I mean, so basically the tenets of oneness are there's one God, and he's a personalized God. I think Augustine said the same thing. This reason Augustine sometimes gets accused of having sabellian tendencies. We'll go into what that is. I've done it in previous videos and probably future videos, but very similar to Patra Passion. <coughs> that he's a he, he's a personal God. God is a spirit, John 4.24. And then when you saw Jesus, you saw the Father. That it wasn't the second person, the Godhead, who came to die for us. It was actually Jehovah in humanity, in human form. Now, as far as the incarnation goes, let's say between most Trinitarians and, and most oneness, because I've done videos on the different beliefs within oneness. There's uh, different beliefs, and I'm not talking about Socinianism and uh, Arianism of lesser deities and things. I'm talking about you know, was Jesus fully a man? About what part was he a man? Um, on and on and so forth. And so you can read, who's the guy out of Granite City that wrote so many great books on God? My mind, Reeves, Kenneth Reeves. I kept wanting to say read. Kenneth Reeves, you know, even Andrew Urshan way back in the day in the early 20s and stuff, the three in one God. Um, but there's different beliefs in a certain sense um, on what oneness is. Here's basically what oneness people all agree on is that Jehovah God, the Father, became a human being to die for us. Um, some of the nuances there would be different, especially like in Ethiopia and the ancient divine flesh is called various things over the centuries, but now it's called divine flesh. Um, that that would happen, and that and that's why they get called Jesus only because all the fullness of the Godhead dwells in Jesus. Well, that doesn't mean sometimes that's perjurative. 
there were times, you know, 80, 90, 100 years ago that that was actually a self-designation. And actually when G.T. Haywood drew the PAW moniker, he put Jesus only. And so in many uh, cultures and ethnicities, the term Jesus only is still accepted. What's meant by that is you're not denying the Father and you're not denying the Holy Spirit. You're saying that the Spirit in Jesus Christ is God the Father. And it's also the Holy Spirit, Christ in you, the hope of glory. There's only one Spirit. And so, how, you know, if there's not three spirits in God, and very few Christian groups would believe that, and they would be called even by Trinitarian, which Trinitarianism is probably the majority throughout the world, would call those that would believe three spirits in God uh, heterodox. They would say that that's not true. So that's what oneness is. That's what kind of unites oneness, even with all the uh, nuances of oneness is that uh, to wit God the Father, we know of one God the Father, 1 Corinthians 8, 6 I think Brother Simon's really clarifying that for me a few years ago, we know of one God the Father and uh, to wit God was in Christ, God the Father was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself we know of one God, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus it's been my personal experience both of when I was in a Trinitarian church and Trinitarian, I believe the Trinity and fought quite vociferously for the Trinity that there tended to be what's known in theological lingo as subordinationism and this would be that you know Jehovah is the big guy the father and even though in your creedal statements and everything you say they're co-equal co-eternal on and on and so forth even when you get to the theology of it the father generates the son he's the first source or the beginning of the trinity even though they would say that it was always an attorney and this is a, an eternal mystery on how something can have a beginning but not have a beginning simultaneously how something can be eternally generated but not generated uh, because generation genesis indicates a beginning and so a lot of that comes from origin who the the great church in the day the great church is the designation of the church before Nicaea from like 180 to 330 uh, AD uh, considered Origen heterodox and expelled him Origen adjumentius and he gave us a lot of Trinitarian lingo today and he's considered subordinationist it's, it's funny like people would say Tertullian if Tertullian was alive today, he would be considered a heretic, even though he's considered the author of the Trinity, the origin, originator of the Trinity. <laughs> Origen gave us tons of language, and he's considered a heretic. Uh, most, you know, they'll say he's a great church father, and then he's a heretic, and it's kind of interesting. Uh, so, anyhow, what unites what the term oneness means is the Father was in flesh. The Father was in Jesus. When you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. Jesus says this. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Jesus, is, you know, Yeshua means Jehovah, salvation. So the God of the Old Testament is Jesus in the New Testament. And uh, that there's not three co-equal, co-eternal beings in the Godhead. And that's the great mystery of Trinitarianism is what's the word person means because most they would say individuated you know they would say usually that it's not person like you and I are persons and if people believe that so often they're considered heterodox even in Trinitarian circles <laughs> but Tertullian really made clear to me getting back to that that he felt like it wasn't God the Father in Christ, it was the Word. The Word was made flesh. And you know, so the classic oneness retort to that, McGee, when he brought in the Churches of God of Ireland to the oneness camp, says, you know, John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. So what's the definition of God in John 1, 1? 
Well, the Father. Okay, so in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with the Father, and the Word was the Father. Well, no, no, it means the Trinity. Okay, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with the Trinity, and the Word was the Trinity. No, no. So then you're saying in one verse you have to change the definition of theos, which there's no indication the definition of theos should be changed in John 1.1. 1, 1. And so... Um, Tertullian said those that believe the Father was in Christ are the Father sufferers. And that the Father suffered somehow, even though God is a spirit and the spirit can't be crucified. You know, Jesus himself in the Greek language said, I will not leave you orphanos, orphans. I won't leave you fatherless. This is Jesus. John, what's that, 14, 18? I will not leave you father, 16, 17, 18, somewhere in there. But I will come to you. I will come to you. What do you get? Three spirits or one? It's Christ in you. Read Romans 8, 9 through 11 and diagram those sentences there. And you'll see that they use... Father, Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ, Christ interchangeably there, as well as in Ephesians as well. This happens. Uh, Ephesians 3, Ephesians 4. So, um, and getting back to the original question at hand, I was just trying to define terms. What is patripassianism? And so, what is, is one is patripassianism the same? The answer is basically yes. But there, especially in the oneness camp, there's some that are trying to redefine what patripassionism is. <coughs> and then some oneness scholars, some, probably not all and not, probably not most, are trying to say, we're going to defend 1913 Arroyo Seco till now and not look for historical instances of the Trinity. And so we go for the Bible, and then skip, you know, a couple of millennia just about to 1913. So we'll defend it scripturally. We'll defend from 1913. And, you know, there is some wisdom in that, in that, let's say, Sibelius, who would have probably been considered a patripassion at the time, um, you know, history's written by the victors. So they burnt and did away with all his writings over the century. So the only thing you get is his words from enemies and that's always tenuous <laughs> because they're obviously not going to paint the people in the best light. I'm thinking of a picture of Thomas Aquinas from the 1200s where he's being carried um, by Sibelius on one hand and Arius on the other hand, you know, that he has vanquished Arius and Sibelius in his theological wrangling. But, you know, I've been reading some Thomas Aquinas. And, you know, first of all, he says baptism was originally in Jesus' name, as did Martin Luther, as did Zingli, as did the Venerable Bede, you know, down through history. But uh, he's got so many. That God is a simple being. This was a big thing with the medieval scholastics, including... His teacher was uh, Albertus Magnus. And uh, that God is simple. And what that means is one. I remember when my PhD teacher at a Trinitarian college, when I was getting a doctorate in uh, uh, Christian philosophy and biblical archaeology, I never completed that degree, by the way. Just it wasn't the course of my life. But I was taking classes towards it, PhD level. And my, so my Trinitarian professor, he says, so what does the term simple mean? And, and I said, uh, you know, raised my hand, I said, one. And it was like I hit him with a two by four. He was like, yeah, one. So then we had to have a assembly the next day saying that they still believe the Trinity and all this. But, I mean, that. so when you say God is simple, um, that goes a long way to the oneness of God. And so... Uh, you know, and so the Father sent the Son. Well, there was a man sent from God by the name of John. Jesus said to his disciples, as the Father has sent me, even so send, send I you. Were they pre-existent somehow? So, you know, you really can't use those argumentations. And so often we implant a Western thinking process on the Bible. And that's, that's really the basic thing. So to answer the question... Um, without just going upstairs and pulling out my writings. I've probably done this in times past on the YouTube channel. We've got like 5,000 videos or something. Um, <coughs> and reading it, I think I have actually, 
you know, I think an honest answer would be yes. I would say there was a German book, uh, Der Paradox Ehm, by Brill Publishing. It's only available in, in German. But I mean, they come to the conclusion like Ignatius really just believed what the early church believed. And basically that Sabellianism wasn't some new thing that popped up in the second century and the third century, that it was actually the earliest groups of believers. And then you had guys like Justin Martyr, who I think in some ways advocated for baptism in Jesus' name, at least the disciple did. Um, and he said Jesus when he baptized, even though he used kind of a expansive Trinitarian formula. But uh, that they brought in some Greek philosophy, Clement of Alexandria, the Neoplatonist school there in Alexandria. And, you know, it's not an accident probably that Athanasius and Alexander, the champions of the Trinity, so to speak, were from um, Alexandria, Egypt. But, but so often, like Athanasius, he said the prayers of Jesus. Obviously, God doesn't need to pray. That's humanity praying to de deity. And so, so often, and I've done so many videos on this and answered so many questions, and it's like people have no context. They, they obviously, and I, I don't expect them, they haven't watched all 5,000 videos. So then they'll say, well, what about the prayers of Jesus? What about the baptism of Jesus? Regardless of how many videos I do on all that. Well, let's say the prayers of Jesus, Athanasius would say that's not a proof of a trinity. That's humanity to, div to divinity. And so that leads me to believe that a lot of Trinitarians today really don't know what the trinity is. Or if they do, it's just very simplistic when they say the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. These three are one God. And they... Uh, don't divide the person, but neither separating the substance. And uh, it's very clear there's three, but these three are one. And it's like an apple, you know, it's got a peeling, it's got a uh, flesh, and it's got a core, but the flesh is not the peeling, and it's not the core, the core is not the flesh and the peeling. And, you know, the egg, you have the egg and the yolk and, and all of this, and the white, the yellow part of the egg. And uh, these are all examples. Um, but, you know, there's tons of questions. So my point is, is when somebody says there's three persons, I'm like, okay, person, I'm a person, so you mean like three individuals. Well, most Trinitarians would say, no, that's not what I mean by person. I'm like, well, don't use the term. Now, their retort to me is, well, don't use the term oneness. And I always say, look, I'm totally fine using biblical language to describe God. You see the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That Revelation 22, 3 and 4, that you have God and the Lamb as one person, a he and a him, God and the Lamb on the throne. I'm way fine with that. I'm way fine with the Lamb being on the throne in Revelation chapter 5, you know. <coughs> that Jesus overcame and sat down with the Father on his throne, Revelation 3.21. So that would be best case scenario, but then they're like, well, we use the term monotheism, both of us, and so, so you use oneness and monotheism, and so we can use, you know, first person, second person, third person, trinity, triune, uh, uh, co-equal, co-eternal. So, and I'm like, well, you know, I'm using two terms, and you're using 15 terms. They're like, well, what's the difference, you know? And, uh, and it's pretty much, I mean, you really read your Larry Hurtados and all this. They would say before 50 AD the trinity wasn't. No, and somebody was telling me they were, I think, listening to R.C. Sproul. I know he's passed away now. And he was saying that the apostles didn't believe in a trinity, but they wrote the Bible in a Trinitarian way in the New Testament. I always thought that was an interesting thing through the process of inspiration. But uh, I would say, obviously, biblically, the trinity doesn't exist. And to get back to our original question, Yes, basically patripassionism and oneness is the same, but we don't believe God is a spirit. The Father is a spirit. So we don't think the Father could die. It was humanity. And that's some unanimity. Okay, so Trinitarians would say it's the Word in Christ. We would say it's the Father in Christ, Jehovah in Christ, 
probably both would say it's Jehovah in Christ with maybe some rare outliers there. And so it's whether it's the Father in Christ or the Word in Christ, that's really the huge deal in church history and also biblically, you know, first John 2, 23 and 24, how you interpret that, 22 